Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, Part 37. This episode shows me using a cylinder hone and drilling the holes to bolt the cylinder covers to the cylinder. Once the main video starts, you will be watching heavily edited extracts from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine, which is a Patreon-only project. The full-length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. There are some other benefits of being a patron of my channel. You get to download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. This compilation video trailer has been made using heavily edited clips from How to Build a Model Steam Engine Part 20. This episode is about drilling all the holes in the cylinder covers and the cylinder. First of all, I'd like to show you this. It's a very cheap tool that I bought off eBay some years ago. It consists of three small carborundum stones mounted on the end of three levers, and the arrangement is that the three levers holding the carborundum stones are pressed outwards inside the cylinder by the large spring, and this causes a positive pressure to be applied to the inside of the cylinder by the carborundum stones. All you then need to do is spin the stones. I'm using an electric drill. You could do it in the lathe, but I think an electric drill is more controllable and a little bit safer. To be perfectly honest, I didn't need to do this because the finish I got from the boring tool inside the cylinder is more than good enough. The piston ring supplied with the Victoria used to be cast iron, but now it's a Viton rubber style o-ring. So the smoother you can get the inside of the bore, the better it is for the o-ring. Normally when machining cast iron I wouldn't use a lubricant, but I feel a lubricant is useful for this job, and as you can see lots of black carbon is coming out from within the cylinder. Now it's time to drill the holes in the cylinder cover. Here is the front cylinder cover and I fitted the gasket to it. Why have I done that? Well it's a really good way of marking the positions of the holes. Making sure the gasket is firmly in place, mark through the holes using a felt tip pen. When the ink has dried, remove the gasket and drill the holes exactly in the center of the black spots left on the casting. If this is done carefully, it works perfectly. The gaskets are accurately machine made and supplied with the kit. You should only do it this way though if you don't have a piece of equipment called a rotary table. When I was a beginner I couldn't afford and didn't have a rotary table, but now they're quite cheap. My recommendation though is buy the best one you can afford. This one wasn't very expensive and it's quite handy because you can tip it to 90 degrees from vertical. In this clip I have the cylinder cover clamped in the chuck of the rotary table and the front cylinder cover is sat on a piece of packing which is just a steel bar. You will notice that there is a slight gap between the cylinder cover and the piece of packing. That's because the centre part of this cylinder cover sticks out further than the flange. I'm going to show the rotary table's operation in detail. I set the position of the cylinder cover in the chuck to one of the black spots when the rotary table was set to zero. And once I drilled that hole, I rotate the rotary table 60 degrees. I need six holes all of the way around the cylinder cover. So the six holes that I need, divided into 360 degrees, the diameter of a circle, is why I'm moving the rotary table in 60 degree increments. The black felt tip pen marks made by the gasket are still a good idea though, because I might get the numbers wrong. After drilling the hole at the 120 degree point, I rotate the table to the next number, which is 180 degrees and then I drill another hole at this point. In this clip I went past the 180 degree point and I came back. This is a new rotary table and doesn't have any appreciable backlash, but it's a good idea to wind back to before the number you want and then wind to it. That way you eliminate any backlash. The next magic number is 240 degrees. And that's a hole drilled at this point. Now it's time to wind the rotary table handle until the number reaches 300. And once again, drill another hole. And this is the last hole to be drilled. And here it is, being drilled. And that's it. I'm going to wind on the rotary table to show you that it doesn't go to 360. 360 is the same as zero, and I've already drilled a hole at this point. Because of the shape of the rear cylinder cover, I need a special spacer. This is an old crank pin and crankshaft from an engine I worked on recently. 
It's just the right thickness, and I'm tapping the part gently into position to make sure that it sits squarely in the chuck. And now I'm repeating the process that you've already seen, so I'm not going to labour the point on this. For the benefit of any viewers who like to watch machining and drilling operations, I'm running the entire sequence at high speed. And now for something completely different. Over at the drilling machine, I'm drilling a large hole in a piece of wood. What's happened, as the repetition of the mass production of all these holes finally pushed me over the edge, well no, here I'm using my vacuum cleaner to vacuum up the wood dust. I made the hole in this piece of wood to allow sufficient clearance for the stuffing gland to allow me to hold the cylinder cover flat on this piece of wood to drill the holes all the way through. Before I drilled the large hole in the wood, I drilled the holes in the front cylinder cover first. Because I turned the cylinder flange slightly less than on the drawing, using the existing gasket means the holes are not in the right position. It's only noticeable really on the front cylinder cover, I'll just machine this slightly outwards towards the holes. On the rear cylinder cover the holes are ok, they look fine there. Don't forget the middle bit is going to be painted and there will be some paint round the edge to make the holes look like they're more in the centre. That's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.